you make a really good point about that um, standardization kind of like, you know, as, you know, X25 was a great example. I remember coveting having the standards so I could read the standards and then you get, you know, he just implements the whole thing and it, and it just works. And there's something in here, not just about that, but about the openness of all this stuff, the, the, the you know, the, the Unix, you can see the source code, the, the protocols were there out defined. And then, you know, you, you know, you, you know this better than me afterwards, you know, this decision to public domain it all and give the software away that really accelerated this in a way that I feel like there's these proprietary or very carefully controlled standards really holds back technologies. That's absolutely true. Tim, Tim, apart from being a, a, a genius in picking the right elements for a standard, uh, he picked what he needed and not too much. Um, he knew about open source. Most people didn't know about open source technologies in those days uh, at CERN. And uh, he put out the software on, <laughs> he couldn't put it out on the web, but he, he put it out on uh, um, uh, Usenet, okay? Or the bulletin boards. Mm -hmm. And uh, his boss, Mike Sendall, whose name has to be mentioned, a wonderful man who gave Tim the, the, the freedom to do this. Um, he, uh, uh, when Tim went to, to Mike Sendall and asked him, I'd like to put the software out because um, we need help, we need programmers, and we can't get them at CERN. Um, uh, how do I do it? And Mike said to him, Well, officially, you should go to the legal service, but they will wait a long time, they'll look at it for a long time, and they may say no, in which case you can't do it. Um, and they're very unlikely to say yes, so just do it. <laughs> put it out there. Yeah. But yeah, on, on that very point, uh, there is a, a story which is not very well, uh, well known. Uh, but first of all, before going any further, uh, there are sometimes, or I would say, uh, wrong uh, messages which uh, we may hear uh, here and there, uh, such that um, Tim Berners-Lee was generous enough to not make money by selling his, his, his web, but by putting it in the, in the, public, in the public domain. Uh, but it has never been an option. Uh, when Ben and I joined CERN, when Tim Bernese joins us, we knew when signing our, uh, our contract with CERN that we would be paid by the European citizens, but all that we do would belong to the American citizens, mm. to, the, to the European citizens. Goodness. <laughs> European <laughs> citizens and, and not to us. In other words, unlike in many universities uh, or even research centers, uh, we cannot take patents. We do not own anything. All that we do belongs to Sir. So there was no option for Tim to be selling to anyone the web. The web will, as always, uh, belong to Sir. Now, uh, it turned out that uh, in March 80, uh, in March 93, Sir convinced uh, the Sir management, or more exactly, the legal service at that time at Sir, that the good thing to make sure that all the web would be freely available to anyone, uh, was to put it in the public domain. And CERN decided to put the web in the public domain. And However, here we are. <laughs> yeah. However, uh, it had been a mistake, uh, which could have had very serious consequences. Um, when Tim left uh, CERN in uh, July uh, 94, a bit, a bit later, I, I was asked to took over uh, his technical team uh, in addition to my other job. So I, 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 I took the job and uh, it was a time where uh, the team, uh, the web team at CERN had to release the long awaited version three of, uh, of the web software. So I looked at it and I remember this, uh, public domain uh, story, uh, even though I was not involved at that time, and then I realized what it meant. Because public domain means, the idea is not bad. Public domain means I have this object, I want everyone to use it and to, to be able to modify it freely. So I say, 
Uh, I put it in the public domain, which means I relinquish the intellectual property. This object no longer belongs to me. So please right. use it because it's even not to me, right? Right. If yes. you do so, you run the risk that anyone say, are you sure it's not yours? Okay, so I take it. I correct the bug. You need to change one smart, what tiny thing. I correct the bug and now it's mine. And I deny anyone to use it for you. So this is a risk of appropriation. This should not have been done. And no one does that uh, ever for software. Right. I rush to the legal service. I said, you know what has been done uh, eight months ago? Is, uh, they say, no. Oh, my God, who has done that? Oh, the guy had left so, from that point that time. We rushed to the IPO, Intellectual Property uh, Office in Geneva, and said, OK, what, what should we do? And they said to me, well, when is your next release? I said, um, version three, I should release it about two months from now, three months. Do it now, do it immediately. Do not wait a single day. And the week after, we released it, but on the open source, which is something that Tim ignored. Tim did not know the, the details at that time of the legality of open source. What he knew at that time was the spirit of collective work of, uh, on open source, involving people from young people and students from university to help him working, working. But the legality, he did not know. So what we did is that, okay, look guys, this object now is version three. It still belongs to CERN. We own it. So it's released under open source. We own it, no one can take it, but we give to everyone to anyone, irrespective of what you are, right. the irre irrevocable, irrevocable and perpetual right to use it free. But no one can take it. This is open source. And later on, the version four and the others done by MIT, by Tim Menosley at MIT, they use the same mechanism mm -hmm. and no longer anyone used, uh, used the public domain. But still, there were eight months during which someone could have taken the way. Mm -hmm. On that note, I'm going to thank you both for spending half an hour talking to me about networking stuff because I, I, I really like networking a bit too much um, for my own good. Um, and we managed to avoid talking about Token Ring. And I was really spent a long time talking about my great love of Token Ring. Um, thank you both for you know your part in getting TCPIP going in Europe. That's how I got on the internet in uh, in the in the 80s. And uh, you know for your part in getting the web going. We're all uh, we're all living this uh, this web experience together. Uh, wish you both a good evening.